Awesome, cool. awesome. Thank you so much for the introduction, Cal. Can everyone hear me okay? Because I'm not sure if this is working well. Awesome. So um, again, my name is Abdullah Said, and I appreciate this opportunity to share what I'm about to share. Um, so let's jump right into it. And please, if you guys have any questions or you feel like interrupting me with anything, please do. I love interruptions because it's boring just talking to myself. <laughs> All right, let's get started. <clears throat> okay, so to Webflow or not to Webflow? What is the deal? Um, simply put, Webflow, um, my experience with Webflow, it came very handy in some things. And some other things, there were some obvious roadblocks, which is what this discussion is going to be about. So a little bit about myself first and foremost. My name is Abdullah Said, and I'm an entrepreneur to the max. I'm not even sure if I spelled that entrepreneur right, but <laughs> I know I'm an entrepreneur. That's all that matters. <laughs> Okay, so um, what I do is I'm a hedge fund manager and also I'm starting a company to, which is where I came into Webflow um, through. I started a company that allows you, its users to, to share their real trade data. So it'll be, stock, I'm talking about the stock market when I say trade. So just keep that in mind. The real trade data so that um, other people can find and learn from the actual, best people in the industry or the good people in the industry um if you want to know a little bit more about myself you can grab my number and we can have a phone call and have some dinner but <laughs> uh other than that i'm from ghana i don't think that part is important for this discussion <laughs> we can go over that later all right so for my um website for investor breed well what i actually needed was a site for marketing somehow to authenticate and for people to log into our website uh user pages that has dashboards um you know a page for stocks which will link into using apis and everything and um, connecting with other users kind of like a social media like facebook payment processing that's a must pulling third party data now this was pretty much the red flag, not red flag, but I would say the roadblock into using Webflow. I think if it wasn't for this, Webflow all the way, 100%. And I did use Webflow and I'll show you guys what I use, we use it for. User generated content, so our users will be able to post their own things just like um, Facebook. And for our users to be able to video chat and have messages in the app, um, in, in, the, in the app. So, now, where Webflow did really well in was to help me with my marketing site and payment processing. Everything else um, was doable in Webflow, very doable. But the only thing is that you would need several pieces and to juggle several pieces. Um, like, for instance, um, what's it called? I'm going to need some help here from some of the experts. Cal, Rachel, jump in. For like, for instance, um, having your own dashboard, you need several different um, plugins and several different member services. stack. Member stack. There we go. Thank you. Thank you, Kyle. <laughs> I was looking for that, that word. Um, so, yeah. So with all of this, you need all those that I put in caution. I would have needed more to make it done. Now, don't get me wrong. For the marketing side, it did well. And what I love about Webflow is that it helps with, um, let me actually, I pulled it up over here. It's actually very fun to, to use at the, at the bare minimum. I mean, look at, look at this website. How, how is this not fun? Like great trans transitions, you can do all of this in Webflow pretty easily. Like for instance, stop here, I'm a new trader. Fun color, like I just love Webflow, I'm sorry. Like there's nothing I can say bad except it couldn't handle the API data. But other than that, it's very, very easy and very fun to do. And I'll tell you, Bubble cannot do this. Like, um, like all the animation in this page, it cannot do this, but Webflow can. So Webflow has its great um, characteristics, but it also falls short of authentic, like making this easy for me. It's doable, but it's not easy. So, how I originally started was I came onto Webflow meeting, trying to learn how to use Webflow. And I asked Kyle, 
hey, Kyle, this is what I'm trying to build. Do you have any, any ideas? He introduced me to zero code. Now, zero code, I don't know if you guys have um, heard of it or seen it before, but zero code is a website you could go to to, um, to find templates and of what you're trying to build, some, something similar. And all you have to do is to customize a little thing here and there, and you'll be able to um, and you'll be able to use it. But and this is actually how I got introduced to Bubble because I saw that um, Zero Code had a lot of great templates, like one for Linkly, and I'll show you that exact one in a second. Uh, templates, there we go. Like one for Linkly, which was pretty similar to what I was trying to do, but not perfect. I think I might have spelled that wrong. Um, let's say um, um, social media. Okay, so there we go, LinkedIn. So it has this template, which is very pretty much like a social media, and you could you could use it to um, use it as a base template. The only thing is that we had to actually scratch everything from it and build every page from scratch again. Um, because for the technicalities of what we're using it for, we were running into a lot of property problems and it wasn't perfect, but it was still good. Um, so let's go. Yikes. Hold on, I think my computer is, there we go. Bubble. All right, so where did Bubble come in? Bubble. Bubble at first, <laughs> it was a hard learning curve, I would say, because from like, unlike Webflow where everything is organized and looks nice, you're, you're messing with APIs, you're messing with um, a much more, I wanna say the word powerful, but I'm reluctant to say that, um, a platform, because <laughs> just look at it and tell me that's not in intimidating. Um, this is what the platform looks like. It's kind of similar, but there you have all of this stuff. And to be honest, I don't even understand most of it right now because my uh, I do I did hire a developer to help me with it, but uh, I understand a big majority of it. And it is a different learning curve than it is to learn Webflow. Webflow was one day done. This took at least a week to even start to understand <laughs> how it works. So. Uh, so yeah, there's that. Um, one second. So I'll take you through what we are, what we have actually done on Bubble to show you we didn't have to use another um, platform, which is fine. I'm sure. Um, one second. Yeah, I am being slow right now. Give me one second. Data. Uh, Okay. Um, okay, I can't find it right now, but that's okay. Um, whoa, what is going on? Okay. Okay, so um, I apologize for that little mishap. Um, but the, let's go to stocks, there we go. Okay, for instance, this, this page, um, there was no way of doing this on the on Webflow, but on um, on uh, because what this is is that we're directly pulling data from uh, another stock. So if we from another site, so if we type in a stock like Apple, the chart comes up. That would have needed a lot more to 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 just get it done. Articles are supposed to come here and you know, we have posts and news. It's still not perfect, but we're still working on it. Um, ultimately, there's not too much to go on here, um, except for what I could use Webflow for and what I couldn't. Um, payment processing, marketing, okay. Everything else was kind of difficult. So we did come up and, and I did come across this thanks to Kyle, actually, he showed me this website, which actually showed me a comparison of different, um, of different no-code uh, developing platforms. So we have Bubble here, 
and uh, you guys can have this link. You can actually have the link to the presentation so you can uh, look through this if, if this will be able yeah, to help yeah. can you. Can you add the link to the, to the, group, to the group chat? To the chat? Sure. Yeah, yeah. That's cool. I hadn't seen that before. Yeah. Uh, there we go. Share. Thank you. Copy link. And anyone can do. Copy link. Cool. No problem. And I'll do that right now. Okay. So where was I? So zero code, this, this website um, pretty much compares these two, three, four, five, six, seven um, platforms and see where they're good at and where they're not good at. So for instance, like custom code, you probably want to use uh, Bubble or Wappler. What I came to find out is that this, this Wappler, it actually has the most capabilities and it's, it's the strongest, but it's not a no code platform. That's the only, that's the only uh, downside. But other than that, to if you want to enjoy your time in, in building and whatnot, this is kind of very short. Uh, you want to use Webflow. But if you want to build something more for now, but if you want to build something more powerful or um, capable of doing more dynamic thing and pulling data from other sources or other sites or other companies, you want to use something like Webbubble or Webflow or something like that. Uh, that's pretty much wraps it up. I hope that didn't really take 15 minutes, but- can I, can I ask a few questions? Can I ask a few Please. questions? Well, you're, you. can you go back to your bubble app? Yeah. Let's see. I'm curious, I've never built anything on bubble before. I've heard a yeah. lot about it, never built mm -hmm. anything. And so I'm just curious, um, how much control over the design do you have? That, that is actually where I said uh, um, Webflow beats Bubble in because um, with I, 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 when you say design, if you're just talking about color, you know, the basic stuff, sure, Bubble can handle that. But when we're talking okay. about dynamic and anim animation, all of this stuff, Webflow all the way, that wins. Cause so <laughs> you, can do, you can do a layout however you want. Exactly. That we short on. Let me show you something. Okay, so you see how these words go go up as I scroll, and the the Lottie animation goes down, right? And yeah. when I scroll back up, that cannot be done in Bubble, um, or at least we weren't able to figure it out. But it's okay. almost impossible to do to do in Bubble. Um, and like I know, the fading and I know. design to to fade the second side and come back, it cannot be done in Bubble. Mm -hmm. And in a web for my app, my lack of um, my lack of understanding. Go ahead. Yeah, in a web app, you know, where you're actually you, you're like doing something. I think the the importance of being able to do like whiz bang animations and transitions and all that is probably less crucial. That's you a, know, it's more yeah. it's more about like can Marketing. you control the the layout and the user experience and the design so that all the fonts and the colors and the, the, the borders and the radius and the drop shadows and like all of it, can you control all of that stuff so that it feels very much on brand or is doing that really cumbersome and do you have to do a bunch of custom CSS and things like that? Um, no, you can actually do that pretty smoothly um, for what okay. you're talking about. Yeah, um, you can do that pretty smoothly. The only part you can do smoothly it's the animation and the transitions and stuff like that. But okay. Yeah, that, that and then, so if you jump back to like your bubble dashboard, I'm just kind of curious. Okay. So I'm thinking in my head, you pulled up a screen that had all of your pages, right? So I'm, I'm like looking here and this is all like totally new to me. So you just click there and now these are all the pages that you have in your, in What's your that? app. So yeah. I see. Mm -hmm. So, so this would be instance, like your, yeah. For instance, the dashboard, um, you can preview it. And you see we have, we don't have um, all the information we need right now. Of course, we're still having a lunch, but um, you know, it's cause, so this places will be empty for now, but um, in, in designing it, um, you see we, we do have a lot of dynamic things going on like the background and everything and the, um, what was your question? I lost track of your question. <laughs> no, it, it was, it, yeah, it's just, I'm, I'm curious to understand kind of navigating around bubble and 
and how you do different things and where the pages are and where the designer is. Sure. So, you know, yeah. So of, of course you can navigate your pages over here. Um, the designers just like um, on Webflow, it's over here, but the only thing that they have added on bubble that Webflow doesn't really um, have is the data part where, and kind of the workflow part where you can um, kind of put a, a bit of code. Wait, no, where's the API? Okay, there we go. You can connect API, put um, different APIs to put code and also mess with it. So for instance, if you wanted to design something you pull from another website, like we did in the stocks page, As you see, we said there will be a learning curve. You gotta pretty much understand everything. I don't know. There's just a bunch of stuff. I didn't even concern myself too much with, with it. I said, hey, you're the designer, you're the coder, you do it. <laughs> you know? I didn't want to think too much about it, <laughs> but yeah. Uh, out of like, if you want, like, would you know how to change the font size where you see where it's a simple and advanced? Like, what if you wanted to change the font size of that? Okay. You just double click um, uh, and over here you have everything you need. So oh, you I see. It. So you can, you can also import your own fonts and everything that you yeah. have. So almost like in Webflow, where on the right side of the panel, the designer, like the CSS is like ever present. When you're double clicking on things, then you're getting a, then the, the window is popping up for you to change the styles of it. Exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So when you double click on it, you can edit it. If you want to add something new, it's at the left, um, as you can see over here. Yep. Make a uh, something. This is pretty standard stuff on, on a no code platform. Oh, so you just added text and you just dragged a box in there and we're like, I'm gonna like almost like a PowerPoint. Yeah, so you can, you can drag the box as big or as small as you want. Um, and let go and then you can add text. This comes uh, up and you can style it and everything, yeah. So it's not necessarily like HTML where things flow in the doc, in the like what they would call the document object model where like the, where things are listed on the page that shows like that impacts the, um, the layout. You're able to just put it wherever you want. Oh yeah, yeah, definitely. <laughs> um, so then how do you that. do it when, huh? go ahead. Okay, so ahead. We, can, we, can just, um, we can just put our text wherever we want, but we can also um, style it and make it, hold on, let me show you an example, better to show than to. Okay, so hello world, the typical first code that everyone learns how to do. Yep. Um, so of course you can put conditions on them like for instance if you needed to act in a certain way um when it's clicked you know this yep. something will happen etc um i'm sure you know how to do yep. that but yeah. um, yep. transitions or whatever so we have our hello world we can just like on webflow we can drag it to put it somewhere else change the text change the size whatever and I'll show you what that looks like. Let's just preview and see where it comes in. Hey, Abdullah, what Oh, wait, I didn't, I didn't you, yet, uh, huh? Uh, when you, you know, uh, for a mobile screens, you know, responsibly. Yeah. This way, yeah. Yeah. Stuff, right? So what's going on with the, uh, you know, cell So the when designing for mobile screens, all we do is, you know, how in Webflow you can click the things and, you know, um, those little buttons that tell you, but this one this is the best we can do. <laughs> you have to be. You have to physically change the the size of the um, of the window and make sure it's uh, it's good enough. So we we'll first have to always preview, and then we'll mess with the design and uh, and make sure this is working well before we move on. So it's kind of more tedious than just clicking a button on Webflow and changing the screen. Uh, size proportionally to what you need. So like you hid that menu on the left once the screen shrunk. How did you, how would you do that in bubble? How would you hide that? How would you have a conditional? Yeah. How would okay. you do that in the code or not in the code, but in bubble? 
Okay, so um, my designer um, programmer took care of that, but I understood most of what he did. Um, so I would, to the best of my abilities, I will explain it. I know he used um, web um, the work workflow to put a condition, but we were we were actually facing uh, problems with that. So he had to just put two of these things. Now past that, I wouldn't be able to tell you a thing because I'm not that proficient. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, he. Yeah, but he ended up solving that issue somehow. You know what? What's interesting? The la, I guess the last question I'd have is: Are there is there the concept of like classes? So it's like, oh, every button I want to look this way, or do you have to style every button individually? No, there is the concept of um, classes. Um, like for instance, you go to styles. You have blue. We we um we set some styles. You know, things that you can come back and pull from. Or anytime nope. you want, yeah. Oh, and then and then when you drag that in, you can like set that as one of the styles that you have created. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's kind of interesting. I'd I'd be curious. Show of uh, not that we have people on the not that everyone's not we can't see their hands, but I'd be curious. Show like uh, for P if anyone else has has used Bubble, because I've never used it, and I'm looking at this just thinking like. It's, it looks hectic, really, right? <laughs> yeah, it seems really. Um, that's the same. I, thing. I think ineff inefficient is almost the word I'd use. That's the same thing we. Uh, <laughs> I went through. I said the learning curve for this is very, very, very much different than Webflow. Webflow literally took me a day, and I was on it like that. But for this, uh, about a week to learn how to use it like that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Corey just mentioned, he said it looks like Wix. And that's when, when you were just dragging things around the screen, I was like, this is a Wix thing where you can just like put stuff wherever you want. And Isn't it, that similar um, to Webflow? Well, Webflow, you can put things wherever you want, but like they have to like, you know, where you put them in your layout, like where you drag them in the, or like it really matters, you know, because that's the. You can't, you can't really drag them where you want. In fact, they, yeah. they, as well, like one of the biggest difficulties in learning Webflow if you come from a design background is that you try and pull things where you want them to go and it never works the way that you yeah, do. Yeah, 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 you got to pull the box model. <laughs> That's the thing. Yes. <laughs> uh, Absolutely. Yeah. So I'm going That's to stop sharing my screen right now because, yeah, um, I'm on a time crunch, actually. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, well, actually, I do have another couple of questions, actually, because... Sure. Um, yeah, because you said, I mean, it, it was super quick and easy for you to learn Webflow. And I know that's because you mentioned to me before you have like um, like a some kind of programming or engineering background. Technical background. Mm -hmm. So I'm interested to hear like what that was. And then what was the threshold after which you needed to hire somebody else in? Like what was okay. it that you didn't quite manage to get that you needed the extra help for? Okay, so sorry, I was just moving really quickly. So the um the the place okay so I was good up to the point that I had no idea how to um it, how to and use the API data in Webflow like the whole design thing in Webflow I was fine with like I could design my website um, but as far as I could get was the marketing marketing website and that was it past that needed much more knowledge than I was cap than I knew at the at the moment um. And I even still know because I do have a technical background, but I never really mess with APIs and I never really mess with, um, what's it called? Webhooks? I don't know. Huh? Webhooks? Webhooks? Yeah, sure. Um, yeah, I've never really messed with APIs in particular though. Um, yeah, so I had I needed help with that. And then plus my time is kind of, better used somewhere else for my companies than to design the mm -hmm. website itself. As uh, I'm sure you guys already know, <laughs> I'm down yeah. on time. Uh, yeah. It's hard to do everything. Yeah, 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 exactly. But this, is, this is like a, a, big, a big deal. I mean, to anyone who's been to the last couple, but maybe not, doesn't go too far back. I mean, Abdallah, this is, this is hit like, what three four five potential meetings and the first meeting he was like i'm making this thing and i'm not sure how to make this thing and now he's here presenting 
the thing. <laughs> like it's yeah. it's coming along, but it's not quite ready to launch, correct? It's not ready. Thirty first. Mm -hmm. We're aiming for the thirty first. So by the thirty first, everything should be ready. I'm launching on the thirty first, ready or not. Here I come. <laughs> Pretty much. That's awesome. Um, yeah, we're not. I don't like spending time on just building because I could build the whole world in that case. Like you know, I gotta launch as soon as possible and get it out there. Start building, measuring, learning. That's the whole circle thing. But yeah. That's great. Yeah, it's. Um, I, I I hope that that was helpful for other people because even just, um, you know, it wasn't a it wasn't like a super deep in dive depth. into yeah, yeah, into, yeah, yeah. into bubble, but just even seeing a, a real live bubble app is, is helpful. You know, it's, mm. it's helpful to kind of just get a little flavor of what bubbles actually like. And so I thought that that was, that's actually, it's actually pretty helpful. Um, anyone else, uh, Abdallah said he's, he's got a time crunch here. Uh, does anyone else have any questions for Abdallah? Cool. Um, the my takeaway on this is, um, it looks like Bubble is really powerful, and you can do whatever you need. It also looks like the kind of thing where, if I needed to build a an app, I would maybe try one of the other tools for because I'd be like intimidated that it's going to take me so long to learn. My and... Wi-Fi isn't so strong. It's like, what's that? I think that was Abdallah, but then he he muted himself again. Some Wi-Fi yeah. issues. <laughs> yeah, not that not that Bubble is like the wrong decision. It, I think I think Bubble is pro is was the right decision for, uh, you know, for Abdallah, and, but. It's the kind of thing that I would probably, if I was doing something right now or in six months, I would do another canvassing of the tools that were out there to take a peek and see if the, if there was one that was maybe a little easier to learn. Um, that was- Hello, can you guys hear me? Yeah, now we can. Okay, sorry about that. My uh, Wi-Fi had to switch. Okay. No problem. Go ahead. Um, there's a new tool out there called um, Wised, Wised, W-I-Z-E-D. Uh, let me see if I can find a link. Is it like Wised.io or W-I-Z-E-D. Yeah, W-I-Z-E-D.io. And they talk about how this, I mean, this just got like, I just learned about this, I don't know, a month ago, three weeks ago. Um, they talk about how it's like you build your Webflow website and we're going to allow you to put build an app on top of that Webflow website. And so they borrow a lot of the UI and the UX from Webflow so that it should feel very similar, but then you can layer in external data on top of it. So that would be one where I'd, I would look to that. I'd be like, yeah, maybe I'll try that. Um, first because I bubble was like in it seemed like the kind of thing that was a little bit intimidating and I think Abdallah you were kind of saying that is that like you get in there and you're like I can't I can't help but feel as well because so many interface designs have turned from light to dark that whenever I see interfaces that are kind of the light it makes me feel like, oh, I don't know, 1990s Microsoft, like, I don't know, it just has a vibe yeah. to it that makes me feel like it's not, it's not with it. <laughs> That's hilarious. That is so hilarious. Like they haven't updated yet. This is something that- Yeah, yeah, they're updated. like, yeah. they're just like behind the times and they haven't quite got to the last round of updating, you know, so. That's interesting. That's, yeah, yeah. Google turned dark for me the other day without- Oh, my it did? Opinion. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure if I'm like fully into it, but I digress. Go Google search or like Gmail? No, like Google search. Like one day I love, I, I just like opened an internet tab and, and I was like, oh, oh, I dark mode, you know, I don't know what happened. I think it's dark for me too now. Oh yeah. Wow. <laughs> um, maybe what we'll do is uh, I've been wanting to play around with that Wiseed tool. 
I, I listened to a video, uh, the guy is German, so I don't know if it's just his pronunciation of the term wised, but he says it wised, even though I look at it and it looks like wised. So I don't know the actual pronunciation, but I've been wanting to play with it, or if anyone else wants to play with it and then wants to present to the group on, on what their experience was like with it, that would be something that I would love to uh, learn about. And if someone else wants to, has got a thing that they, and they want to just kick the tires and then present, I think that that would be a great presentation for someone to teach us all about why is it um, just thought. I kind of, yeah, I kind of agree. I mean, cause the, obviously what kind of like congregating as, as Webflow uses for the most part, because we believe in the platform, but I've had a few conversations re recently about how certain projects, certain functions, you know, they really, they lend themselves really well to other platforms that do certain things really, really well. And that, well, you know, because Webflow has its strengths and then obviously it has its weaknesses and that's going to be the same for any platform for the most part. Um, so it feels like an interesting conversation to have, especially for anybody who builds websites for clients, who's considering client expectations or, you know, someone says, comes to you and says, hey, make this for me. And it's like, okay, well, I build in Webflow, which means that this is going to be super easy and that this is going to need a little bit more time and a bit more work. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I also... I've... Go ahead. Sorry, I'm kind of, I'm just on a, on a roll apparently today. Um, <laughs> yeah, no, because I came, I was just going to say that I came to Webflow, like Webflow kind of fell on my lap randomly at this time in my life where I embraced it and I loved it and at this point I'm kind of an evangelist but I, I didn't come at it from the position of being like an informed no code experimenter who was considering other platforms and opted for Webflow over, the, over other things so this is a little bit of a like a new landscape for me to kind of be learning about the idea that there are other things that do the same kind of thing but in different ways so I don't know hopefully it's, it's not like too much of a trail for the chapter it's like your first boyfriend and then you find out there's other boys out there and you're like, wait, hmm. but the first boyfriend's actually the best, right? Or something. I don't know. Always the best, right? <laughs> the, um, the, the thing that I have noticed, I don't know if anyone else is this way, but if I have clients that want to build sites, if they're non-technical and they want to build sites themselves or they're a client who I'm going to build it for them. And then they want to tinker with it. And they want to like add new pages, delete pages, move sections around, do all this stuff. I still actually recommend Squarespace because it's easier for, I think it's easier for people to pick up and learn. And the other day I was looking at Squarespace and they've actually added a ton of stuff onto their platform. Like they've baked in like Calendly, if anyone's familiar, if everyone's familiar with Calendly where you can like schedule, um, you can schedule time on people's calendars. Like they have a scheduling portion of it. They've got memberships, they've got email um, marketing baked in. They've got, they, like, they have all these things that actually, as I'm looking at it, I'm going like Squarespace, even though you, it's annoying to build on, I think if you've got a client that, or a situation where you, they're going to like tinker and want to add new pages and move sections around and do all the stuff. And they, they need memberships and they need payments and they need email marketing and they want to like, you can do a lot under one roof with, with Squarespace. Um, so that is, that's one situation where I will um, I will recommend Squarespace if people are going to be in, like, tick some of those boxes. I never recommend Wix. I think Wix is the worst. <laughs> and WordPress. I, I don't like WordPress at all. Yeah. But um, yeah, I, I would probably say that um, it really depends on the client and what they need. And, and, you know, your case, your, you know, your, your, uh, you know, that case of a client that needs to have a lot of things and wants to be able to do a lot of it themselves. Um, mm -hmm. it, it, it totally makes sense to not force them into a, a situation where they can't do what they want um, and they're going to be frustrated because um, mm -hmm. that's never going to look good on you down the road. 
um, it might not, you know, that solution might not be the right thing for the next client who who needs something that can do more of what Webflow does and doesn't need all those other bells and whistles. So it really, you know, it's like it, it's like it's not good to be stuck and 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 so tied to one platform if you have the kind of clients that are varied in their requirements. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. I, you know, a company like FinSuite or, you know, many of the other companies that, you know, that were the agencies that we're seeing in the Webflow space that, you know, are, are really dialing down on Webflow. Hopefully they can find enough of the clients that are, you know, for, for whom Webflow is the right solution. Um, mm -hmm. But I know that there are times when I kind of go, yeah, is Webflow going to be right for this? I hope so. And then I cross my fingers that I'm not going to run into some kind of issue with it, you know, where I can't. If you're not recommending you know. Webflow, Penny, what what's mm -hmm. your what are your other platforms? Are you talking custom? Are you talking what other things are you recommending possibly? Probably, yeah. I mean, semi-custom. The one the one that I have used the most over the last, I don't know, 12, 13 years is CMS Made Simple. I don't know if I ever mentioned it before. Uh -huh. It's a it's a PHP based content management system. My problem with it is that there's been a lot of change over in the dev team. Um, and uh, I have a connection with you know directly to the dev team, but uh, you know, I it's it's custom coding it's hiring i can do a lot of it myself but i can't do it as well as somebody who uses it all the time and and it means hand coding again which i'm tired of doing so and i don't do as well as as i would you know ideally like for my clients to have so you know that that makes it a much more expensive proposition for somebody mm -hmm. Um, yeah, I'm curious, what are some of the, what are some of the platforms other people might come across if, if anyone else is using something other than Webflow? Bueller? No one? It's maybe, I mean, hey, maybe Webflow is, I mean, I, no. yeah, I'm big on Webflow, but. Yeah. I mean, I know, I know from my conversations with Dustin that he's, he worked in WordPress previous to, to Webflow. And one of the enigmatic conversations that I did mention was a conversation that I had with Dustin where we were looking at a real estate agent and the kind of property management system that he might implement on the website and how actually all of the plugins for real estate clients, very, very specific to that particular niche and all of the needs and the filtering needs to, to get that data and display it correctly, are there and ready in WordPress. And they they are not in in Webflow, you know, they just aren't. They're not in a lot of other platforms, actually. A, a lot of them build their plugins for WordPress, and they are so easy and so slick to get going. It's it's almost painful not to use it. Like for for I mean, real estate stuff is is so complicated sometimes. Um, you know, I've I've done a few of them in my time. You know, right, like Rachel said, we just did one in Webflow, but um, you know years prior, I'd done a few uh, in WordPress and, and just being able to use the iHome Finder plugins that they, you know, iHome Finder is like this IDX platform that lists all of their listings and they're already paying for it. They're already in there. They, they have access to all these tools. And then you, you set up the WordPress, you install those plugins and it just starts populating everything. And it's, it's, it's hard not to just want to to do that because it's so powerful. It's so thought out. I mean, yeah, you've got all the same downsides of WordPress that you always have, but uh, you know, if you're, if you're willing to put in the backend management or have, you know, someone whose job it is to make sure WordPress stays updated and make sure the plugins stay updated, then it's not so bad, but it does, it is time consuming. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it's such a it's the thing is it it has so much market share. It's such a behemoth yeah. at this point that, you know, people aren't creating those those kinds of plugins for other systems just because there's just not enough demand for them. You know, hopefully one day um, web, web Webflow will get to the point where there's a lot more available, but they don't even have a plugin you know, marketplace situation right now. And, you know, it's, it's hard to say whether, you know, whether we'll ever get to that point. 
one a big part of it is is the ability to access php you know webflow yeah. doesn't let you use php wordpress is built on php and yeah. so mm -hmm. you know a lot of the database driven stuff I mean, we're, we're one of our one of our um, real estate clients right now that we use. You know, we're using a program or a, a third party IDX system that utilizes Java uh, to pull the IDX listings and populate it on the Webflow page, and it works. Um, but none of those listings are indexable. The you know, so search engines mm -hmm. won't index them. If mm. PHP were enabled, we could do server side loading of it not client side loading of it and that would mean it would all be indexable so so mm -hmm. you know if somebody was searching an address for a house they they saw on the street mm -hmm. there's a chance they could show up but right now none of that will because none of their listings are indexable for their site because of because of the limitations we can do it we can populate them we can show them there but we can't enable the php part of it to take care of the rest of that. So, and, and just stuff, even simple stuff like with passing variables in links, you know, mm. like I would love to be able to do that, you know, in Webflow, if someone fills out a form, pass the variable in the link to show it on a thank you page. And I'm, that's not to say there's prob probably not some third party solutions that could take care of that. But, um, you know, I, Penny, like you, like you, I come from a background of hand coding things and, and doing all that. So being able to, you know, get in there and do the Git posts and, and, and pass variables through links or pass the, you know, the name that was filled in the form field is, is really nice to be able to do that. And it's, it feels very limiting when you can't just do that. Mm -hmm. You know, what's interesting is like, they're trying Webflow is yeah i think it started as this like hey we want to build these like landing pages and then you know i think they started for a long time you could only do single page websites mm -hmm. and then yep. and then they added more and now and so, yeah so, oh, so you're asking what this girl from ted lasso what she was from she was uh, the oldest, the she's daughter, a sister the, the oldest daughter, daughter. Yeah. yeah okay yeah yeah um <laughs> Oh, Ted Lasso is a, yeah. and... a great show, by the way. If anyone oh, wow. watches Ted Lasso, uh, <laughs> um, so the thing with with um, Webflow though is it's more about marketing sites, and so but now everyone's mm -hmm. realizing how awesome it is, and now they've now people are trying to push it into like that actual like app and tool, and how do they how do they bridge that gap? And do they even bridge the gap? That's that's like the question is now, like, do they want to go there or do they want to let other people handle it? Because what you're talking about is uh, for like, you know, being able to, you know, incorporate code and like PHP and like, you know, server side uh, page creation so that we can like index these page, like that's very technical stuff, right? And mm -hmm. how do you make that easy enough for people who, aren't developers I like I like it'll be interesting to see if they actually try to even tackle that or if they just like let other people figure that out yeah and just I, just yeah. say you know that's that's just not our wheelhouse and and you know if you want to do things like that you'll have to find a different system to do it in yeah, yeah. or which would be another cool thing that maybe they'll figure out is like, or we've solved it and here's how you do it. And hopefully it's easy and awesome and makes life easier. Mm -hmm. And then we're just like mind blown even more. Right. Like I didn't even be happy be with the like, best part. Right. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. I didn't even be happy awesome. with like an advanced developer mode or like, or, you know, uh, you've got your team's account or you can get an advanced account. Like, you know, the base ones they don't have all that stuff turned on but here you mm. want access to php you want some of that stuff okay you know it's a higher tiered account level or something mm -hmm. like that so like editor designer developer exactly mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. have you seen um it's they're kind of like the thin suite of europe is kind of how i think of them but there's a company called refocus yeah Here to refocus yes yeah. And they are they do some interesting things with custom code. And I'm forgetting what they use, but there's like a way that they've like pulled in external data to make webflow sites basically dynamic using and I want I can't remember what they're using. I could probably find that. Was it Vue? Yeah. It they're yeah, using Vue. I, they're using Vue. 
view. Yeah, because I I was just on their site the other day, kind of and seeing it was like I saw them last year and they were just designing stuff, but now all of a sudden they're making all these tools available to people, and it's like, well, that's different. They're uh, they have a masonry. Uh, they have a little mm -hmm. plugin for like masonry layouts that was super slick. Super. Yeah, slick. you did um, a you did a little you did a video on that. Right? Did you watch it? I did. I did. Oh my god! I feel so honored. <laughs> yeah, it's not just your mom. <laughs> <laughs> um, Contracts. Kyle makes developer related. Oh god. Kyle, you take it away. <laughs> <laughs> no code collab the site with tips, tricks, and tutorials for your next no code project. Okay. Uh, that was very uh, good. You were very slick. <laughs> oh, thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to get like a video or, or two out a week. It's been about one video a week. I just did one on uh, a big, uh, I just released one on over the weekend about uh, like a, web, a no code workflow and kind of some of the rates that I stepped on and and some of my learnings, but yeah, go check it out. Oh, here's what they did. Okay, I'm gonna show my screen, can I? Um, share screen. Um, so here's what they did. They had Webflow, View, Node. They were, yeah, they were using Node. Ver I, I don't know what Vercel is, but then they've got custom APIs, Airtable, you know, all these things. So they were doing you know, this is, this isn't your, this isn't your grandma's web flow right here, you know? So this is, uh, Oof. yeah. Now you know, do you that's have all, to that's actually... all JavaScript, you know, not yeah. PHP, it looks like. But do you need to know view in order to work with it or? I think this is all custom. Adapted it to be a little bit more drag and drop kind of no i think what's happening is they're saying hey we can do everything in webflow and then when you need to do something crazy we've got developers that use view and node and we build custom stuff that integrates oh. with webflow oh, I, see. I think that's how they're doing it and so that's why they're saying like they treat this very much like they've got developers and those developers also know webflow and they've got, you know, they treat it like a true development shop and Webflow, they just happen to use Webflow instead of, you know, instead of uh, Laravel, you know, they're using. Right. So yeah, I mean, it the, looks like they have some tools that you can use that are available. And then if you need to do something special. Yeah. Then, right. then that's when they do, you, they do the crazy stuff, but it looks like right. it's all um, JavaScript, not, um, mm -hmm not php yeah yeah well which which is like finsuite yeah. right i mean finsuite's um you know they've their stuff's all javascript javascript as well yeah um can i ask penny can i ask you i'm i'm curious i've got um two new builds coming up and mm -hmm. um i was thinking about using client first I haven't watched any of the videos. I just know it's a thing about basically class naming, right? And how yep. to make sure that your class naming is more uh, scalable and future proof. Yeah. I was wondering if you could kind of give a rundown of it though. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'll try. My, my internet connection is a bit dicey today. So I, otherwise I maybe share and show you some stuff, but um, essentially it's, it's. And let me pause you there I'm, for a second. For yeah. those people who don't know, Client First is something that was put out by FinSuite. Yeah. And it's like their way of like, here's how you can name and organize your projects so that it's easier to maintain, I think. But it's from, it's a th thing from FinSuite. So, mm -hmm. sorry. Yeah. Keep going. That's okay. That's okay. And the reason that they've called it Client First is they've made it, they've tried to make it so that anybody can understand what the class names are. So there's no, you know, call dash SM dash six kind of thing like in Bootstrap. Um, it's it, it's naming things in a consistent manner, starting from a component level. Only you create the components, but you follow the 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 naming conventions that you start with. Uh, something like, you know, header underscore component, 
uh, and then from there you go, um, uh, I'm just trying to think because I've been working in it all day, but I can't remember now because <laughs> I've been mostly using their, their sort of starter templates. Um, uh, but then everything within that component, within that section, that isn't just a sort of a global class for like margins or sizing or something like that, but anything that's specifically related to that component also has the name of that component related to it. So it might be like page header underscore component, and then you would have page header dash um, wrapper, page header image page you know so that it's so that as you're looking at it everything is is simple and clean and and relates to everything else in that section so then when you want to go searching for a class name you start typing page header and you'll get up all of the options that mm -hmm. that relate to that page header and then you can just find the piece that you want in the in the list um, of classes that are already created um, and i find that I mean, I have to keep remembering that, oh yeah, there's probably already a class for that because it comes with um, sort of like some uh, basic uh, sort of component-y sort of elements, like a, a page header, you know, like a text and and I'm doing hand movements here, but I've got my camera <laughs> off so you can't see them. <laughs> uh, it's, got, it's got, you know, text on one side, image on the other. Um, I can't, I think there's a slider component. There's a few little components like that, but essentially they're not sort of, it's not like a, um, like a design system um, that, you know, you could sort of take sections and just kind of put your, your whole site together, like in system flow. Uh, but it, it basically has this sort of naming system for sizing and, and margins and padding and, uh, oh, all of that stuff already. And there's a style guide. So you can set it all up in that page and get it looking the way you want. And then you've got that consistency all the way through. So I found that it's quite easy to work in. Um, they do have, uh, besides the, the client first layout, or the like that you clone the whole system that you clone, you can then also use like a template that comes with the whole client first. Um, and using the um, the clonable is good because you, you're saying then you, you've already got the things there. You don't have to like, yeah, you know. yeah, exactly. And, and you would want to start with that, right? You would want to start with the clonable, first of all, even if you're then going to build your templates from scratch, which means you're then building all of your sections by hand, but you've got that sort of basic sizing and and whatnot what's a little different with it is that it uses um rems for um oh. for measurement and it's based on a um i think they call it a four point system or something like that so uh, it's based on a 16 pixel um font size so 0.25 rems is four pixels 0.5 rems is eight pixels etc right so then you're doing multiplication and they give you a little calculator to calculate you know if i want something to be um you know 1440 pixels wide if that's the width of my container then how many rems is do i need to tell oh. it to be right so so you're using rems for widths and margins everything. and padding essentially oh, wow. everything everything i'm used to that because i i used the zurb foundation uh framework for a long time and that's all built on rims so I, it was kind of like nice to go back to that <laughs> from from doing a lot of pixel stuff lately so yeah wow. so I, I you know it's like it's if you've got a lit it, it really doesn't take that long to i i didn't study it intensely i just you know watched a couple of videos and and sat in on a couple of the live FinSuite um, streams where they were going through building things. So that would be something to do is maybe um, catch some of the YouTube um, videos of the live builds that FinSuite did mm -hmm. uh, sort of back in end of August, end of August beginning of September, mm -hmm. um, just to sort of see going through the process of building. Yep. Uh, so you see how you... You know, how to use okay, it. so so next question then. 
And I guess this would be for the group in case anyone else has any thoughts. In my day job, we're going to be rebuilding. Uh, we're rebuilding our website next year. I'm going to try to release it at January 1-ish. And this website was the first website I ever built in Webflow. And I look back and when I'm like managing it, I'm like, Kyle, what the heck were you doing? Like, this is so wrong. Like, what, this makes no sense. Like, what? And as I've been managing it all, like over the years, like it's one of these things where it's like, this is so wrong, but I don't want to try to make it right because I'm going to have to like, redo like i've got to keep going with the wrong to just because i can have a two minute fix or i could have like a three hour fix if i try to like make things right so i just perpetuated the wrong right and mm -hmm. so now we're going to rebuild it how do you how do people go about rebuilding a site in webflow when there's a lot of stuff in the cms so we've got a lot of cms items so i don't think that um, it's, I don't, starting from scratch, I'd have to like import every, it would be kind of a, or, or maybe not a pain, pain in the neck to rebuild all the CMS stuff, but would you just start a, would you start a fresh project and then copy things over? Would you, um, like create a new folder where you have new pages and that's where you create everything. And then you set that all live. What, what's a process if you were going to relaunch a website? Are you creating it inside of the same project in Webflow and then like adding new pages with new classes and then eventually flip the switch and you know what I mean? Does that make sense? Kind of question for the group. I'm, if anyone has any ideas. I think I would probably duplicate the site, work on it in the new one you know, and then when you're ready to switch it over, just change where the hosting's pointing. You know, just when you duplicate, duplicate the a, project. When you duplicate the project, does it take all of the CMS items as well? Yep. Yeah. It, it, it does. It yeah. Straight okay. up clones it. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And because it's already an existing thing, you don't have to have, I, I think you don't actually have to have like a whole hosting plan for it at that point because you're not actually really hosting it. It's like you can you can take a template that has a bunch of pages and lots of CMS items and and um and clone it and now you've got a whole lot of pages oh, yeah. available that you might not even have an, available on your plan right um so yeah go ahead. but but then if you if you use the fin suite extension this is how i would maybe approach it use the fin suite extension to then wipe out all the css and start from scratch so you've still got all your content but then you can just start by restyling it. You can Does that with make their sense, extension. Justin? Yep. Yep. You yeah, can you wipe can, out you all can the wipe CSS. out everything. Yep. Keep yep. the content, yep. wipe all styling away. Yep. <laughs> just nuke it. <laughs> yep. Oh. Now, I, haven't, boy. I haven't tried it, but it's like I've got a couple that it was like, you know, very much like that. Right. It's like, oh God, oh, I'd my, love to just I'm start sitting again. I'm sitting here thinking, oh my God, I'm going to like bring it over and then I got to, you know, delete all the styles and then I got to like rename and then there's going to be some legacy styles that are still there. And I'm like, oh my God, but oh, whew. yeah. Okay. Well, you guys have answered my question. And then, and then should, as long as I point the domain to the new, if I update all my hosting and my DNS stuff, I mm -hmm. shouldn't there shouldn't be an impact on like um, analytics because the property will be, it's not like you're creating a whole new thing. Your property is. Oh. I mean, unless, unless you change any of your URLs. Um, yeah. But you don't want to do three Oh ones, but. Yeah. And yeah. FinSuite has a whole bulk upload three Oh one thing that you can do. Oh my gosh. Actually See, web, Webflow is... even has their, their bulk. Uh, on the back end, their their three hundred one upload system is is not bad too. You know, I know yeah. the Fin Suite's got theirs too, but even if you don't mm -hmm. use the extension, Webflows is all right. But that's is that new? Because I had not it used that be. one before. It could yeah, be. I, I think just it used is. it the other day. 
Yeah, no, I think they only brought that out since since around the time fin FinSuite did, because I'm just like, oh, now they've got it too. I mean, that, right, you know, that's why I come to these things, so I can learn from all you smart people. <laughs> Save myself a lot of time. This is great. Um, yeah, no, I, if you, if, yeah, I would, I would recommend the FinSuite extension if you haven't played around with it. There's, That's there's all sorts great. of things like, you know, the unbind CMS part, you know, how we got, a, oh, I got this great layout and you've got it all attached to a CMS and you go, oh, I'd really love to use this somewhere else. And then you have to go through and detach all of the, all of the connections so to your CMS. Yeah, it'll just say, oh, just unbind this. So you could just unbind a section, whatever yep. you want, and then just copy and paste it over. Mm. It's brilliant. So nice. Yeah. <laughs> I um I saw it when it got first got released, and I saw I like looked through the the release schedule. Have they worked their way through everything to be released, or mm. are there still things that they're releasing? There's still things they're releasing. They put a couple of things on hold because they had their whole the the whole cms library that they had set up with like their all their javascript bits and pieces that they're now rebuilding um in attributes uh that will be oh, yeah. available through the extension so they've kind of shifted gears to that so there's still a few things that they haven't gotten to on the roadmap but they'll get back to those how do they make money i mean i understand they're paying clients but like this is a lot of work yeah but then well then i think some of it's that these are things they're building you know to use with their clients well plus so you, it's not you set yourself up as the you know the the premier yeah. person in this you know the big clients are going to come to them because this is where all this came absolutely from. and i mean they've got this this community that they're building and and so everybody's going to be so tied into their ecosystem that um you know they will start charging you know whether it's going to be classes or certification or you know different kinds of things they'll be you know, they, they've said don't worry there'll be opportunities to pay us <laughs> i wonder if um they just if, if there's like these are our develop like it, i wonder if they like set aside uh team members of theirs to just be like you're working on community stuff you're a developer that's working on community stuff all of these other people we've got a whole other team that works on paid client stuff and i'd be you know and maybe they like rotate out you know it's like now you're working on community stuff you know and, and maybe it's mm. like that but um it'd be interesting you know because if if they're getting big brands that are knocking on their door saying hey we want to pay a lot of money to do a webflow site they got to have people to do those projects as well and they're so mm -hmm. prolific in what they're putting out as of late that you'd think that they've got a they they've got some full-time people that are working on all this i've listened yeah. in on their live streams they've got a bunch of full-time people they've working on just, communities on dev they've got full-time devs they've got full-time designers uh then they have like young designers that they're gonna mm -hmm. they'll go through the showcase and then they'll message people and things like that and then yeah. do you know the the ratio of like how big is their you know revenue generating business and from a team size compared to their community business from a team size or is that i don't know their ratio but i know they started off with just like hiring people part-time and then over time, as their revenue increased, they just, you know, kept them on for time, I guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think some of the younger ones, there's a young fellow named Simon, who's, who is, I think he's still in high school, I'm not sure, or he's just graduating high school. Um, but he's, you know, he designed one of the new templates for client first, right? So it's, an, so they're using some of this community stuff, I think, too, as, as uh, training opportunities for uh, some of this, some of their staff as well, or sort of proving grounds. Um, that's cool. Mm -hmm. Jeez. That's awesome. Imagine having um, at 17. I, I need to bounce here. I am on, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm tuning into you in today from Northern Minnesota. I'm on a little vacation with my, my beautiful bride. And, uh, and so I, I 
dipped away. So I'm, I gotta, I gotta bounce. I think um, if anyone wants, I'm, if anyone is interested in playing with wised or wise it or whatever it is, I think that'd be a fantastic talk. Um, let us know. Otherwise I will try to play around with it and then I could talk on it. Um, but then I think Rachel, you, you've got some plans for the next ones and dates and things. So um, more to come on that. Yeah. So I got to bounce. Okay. You guys can keep talking if you want, but um, thanks for have, have a great rest of your night. It's always fun seeing you lovely people. Have a great night. Kyle. We'll see you. Good to see you too. Bye, Kyle. Bye. He's taking his holiday time. God bless Kyle. So Kyle is much better than I am at impromptly asking great questions in these kind of situations. So this is probably a natural endpoint for like the general <laughs> thing is his exit. But I will say, and I'm going to put you on the spot, Penny has agreed to be presenting the next one. So we're going to have Penny talking. And I feel like but, I don't. But we don't, but we don't know what about what yet. It's a mystery topic as yet to keep the suspense going, to keep the suspense going. Um, oh, uh, what would people like to hear about? Maybe that's a better question. <laughs> interesting. D does anyone have any specific things that they've heard Penny talk about that might be interesting? I don't yeah, know. Moron, and it will be great if you could talk about Moron, a client first. Uh, I'm designing a new project right now and I was kind of debating, you know, um, if I should be building with wizardry or, uh, you know, client first. So I'm curious okay. to learn more about client first. What was sure. the other option? Uh, wizardry. wizardry. Yeah, that's, that's, that's Tim yeah. Ricks, right? right? I haven't, I haven't looked at his, at his system at all. So I'm, I'm sort of noticing there's a lot of people coming out with different systems. Um, there's system flow. And then there's somebody else who's just recently, um, oh, Dave Foy, who was a WordPress guy, who's just brought out a, a course and a whole, he has a whole framework and system as well um, that he's just launching now. So, so yeah, I, I, you know, by then I'll have, I'll have hopefully launched my site. So, you know, I can. I by can then you'll be an expert, like with everything else, right? <laughs> I actually, uh, you'll have to forgive me, Jim. I, I, I can't bring to mind right now exactly um, what it is that you do on a uh, from a web build perspective. Assuming that's that's what's bringing you to this meetings and that that's your kind of daily grind. <laughs> yeah, that's correct. Are you doing well, like a client work? Yeah, yeah, I'm trying to you know, establish my niche but mm -hmm. I'm having a hard time. So I've been trying to sell myself as a web Webflow de uh, designer and developer, mm -hmm. but now I'm putting my design aside so I can focus more on, you know, development side. So yeah, I'm trying to build a new, you know, um, website specifically for my development studio business right now. So yeah, yeah so that's what I'm working on right now. Okay. Yeah. Well, I mean, send a link through anytime. I mean, if you, if you launch it or anything, you know, oh, thank you. Send, send a link and send your email. I, I, I may want to talk to you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm kind of in, in the market for trying to find a few good uh, developers to pass projects off to So. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Expect to hear <laughs> Yes. <laughs> Thanks. And then just also, Rishad, I know that you work at Active Campaign because I had a little excited meltdown when you told me the first time. <laughs> um, but in terms of how that relates to uh, Webflow and WebBuild. Wait, in terms of, what was that? The uh, if, you're working, if you're working, I mean, if you're working with Active Campaign, that's kind of your daily bread and butter, but then obviously. Right. You know, you're here and you're learning Webflow and the web development side of things interests you, like how does that tie into it? Or is it a side hustle or something like that? Uh, yeah, it's pretty much a side hustle. Um, um, so I've got, I'm trying to basically do like a agency kind of setup. Uh, I've outsourced design before, but my main focus is to have websites that uh, convert. Uh, so not just, um, you know, 
nice design and all and, and all that and nobody goes on the page or maybe you direct a whole bunch of traffic and no one really clicks on the main stuff so my focus is to essentially drive conversions uh and i've got like a few case studies on my website where i've been able to, where i've been able to do that like i took one restaurant and like with like a good combination of copy and design like they convert like 10 11% which is actually on the higher side typically it's like 6 7 um so yeah it kind of varies as far as that goes but like that's ultimately my aim to build like um high converting websites with webflow okay cool okay so that this is useful cuz now i know what kind of things to pick your brains about in the future. yeah and uh, i mean honestly i mean i'm a front end developer as i said so like uh so my quick take on bubble actually it's ugly as hell i mean you said like that 90s ai uh, ui or something it's probably worse <laughs> than that yeah. um i and you said like dark design is a thing and all that i mean that's a trend but in general like if you just see the way like the graphics and the icons are i mean it's just ugly um so i and i've seen like some other options like there's one called a dalo i don't know if how you if you say it right um i think that looks a bit better um but to kind of address that whole webflow versus like bubble and all these other things uh from my experience working with uh saas clients and that's kind of like the niche i'm trying to uh stay in like saas and like startups essentially so in that kind of tech space cuz i have like obviously worked as a developer in that space uh basically they use webflow for marketing and then they have their app or their saas or their service basically and that's its own thing so the biggest benefit is that webflow is handled by their marketing team and the marketing team doesn't have to worry about like bugging developers to deploy stuff so that's like the big advantage so uh, and the other thing obviously is that if you have a design system in the company webflow makes it easy to you know uh, make things look the same so your app can be coded and like the buttons can be coded and then in webflow obviously you know you you add your div and then or your button or whatever and you do that so you can still maintain the same um, interface but it's like done by you know uh, with the marketing website you know you have it done once or may, and then maybe you have someone come in and tweak stuff obviously with the development it's uh, you know you have code that changes all the time so i think that's where like the use cases for me at least like that's how i see it like just don't you know forget all this view stuff and and throwing it in in there i mean like if you really I mean, i don't know what refocus does honestly but for me it's like either you, no code or all code because i'm a developer and that's kind of how i see it mhm mm mhm mm so low code is just like a laughable low code is like a, what are you doing i mean make up your mind <laughs> Just learn how to code, man. <laughs> <laughs> I, so well, I like, went through went through that that site. What was the name? Uh, I had it open. Uh, so I went through that site that he mentioned. Uh, Kyle mentioned, which was that low code option, or which was in that chart. Um, and I'm scrolling and I'm scrolling and scrolling, and then I see this whole big section of code, and I'm like, this is just a code website at this point. I mean, you're calling it low code, but uh, you know, you're giving people a few options to do, you know, the drag and drop stuff. but i mean it's still you know the wrong about deployments and stuff like that i mean it's mostly code at that point mm -hmm. but yeah if you want to pick my brain on developer stuff or i don't know hot takes on all this stuff <laughs> hot developer takes yeah the the renaming of this of this meetup <laughs> basically yeah <laughs> or, or or how much i hate wordpress Uh, so <laughs> active campaign by the way active active campaign by the way uses a lot of php and i hate it if if i didn't um if i if i didn't work for active campaign and i looked at it from the outside i'd be like yeah this looks nice but now that i work for them and i see the code uh, and this, there there is a lot of good stuff coming uh, which is not in php a uh, new designer uh, you don't you're not supposed to know that but uh, it's coming <laughs> <laughs> And I know so, we're I know we're winding down at this point so I don't want to open too large a rabbit hole but if you could I I Do, I, do I, you have any issues with active campaign by the way that I can communicate <laughs> <laughs> I mean 
let's not even go there. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, another time, another time. Yeah. Another time, another time. But um, <laughs> yes, um, <laughs> no, but um, I was just going to say like PHP specifically, if you were going to summarize what that is in a few sentences, Dustin, I know you could probably do this as well, but between Dustin, Rashad and Penny, could you tell me a really succinct dummy's guide to PHP like right now? I mean, the, the main thing with P is just a lot of database integration. It's, I mean, it's a, it's a coding programming language in, in itself. There's a lot of powerful stuff you can do with it, but um, it's messy and it's a lot to learn. <laughs> yeah. Any, any of the hot yeah. developer takes? It's one of the ugliest languages I've ever used, honestly. Just straight up ugly. Um, like, uh, I don't know what, it, so it was meant to be like a scripting language, I guess. Um, and then they just built WordPress with it and they just, uh, just took it and ran with it basically. Um, and what do now, you mean by ugly? I mean, is it the, the code, like the hard code, to learn the code, or is it like, you know, a uh, hard to read, I would say almost. Yeah. Um, and that makes it hard to learn. Mm. Yeah, it's it's not as intuitive to follow as like JavaScript and stuff like that is. Mm. So it's like if you're learning a language like a, like say a foreign language, a lang like a language has grammar, um, and when you read that grammar, like it it should seem like intuitive or it should seem you know like this makes sense or it takes some time, or or you know you don't take as much time to learn that grammatical concept. Like you look at PHP and you're like. This is just like all over the place and chaos. Like, what is this guy thinking? Yeah. Um, Same with any language, right? So it's like Spanish versus Russian, you know? Yeah, but but there, there is some structure and, you know, but PHP is just like all over the place. It's just, yeah, Very it's just human. all over the place. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. But like I said, it was, it was a scripting language. So it had a, like a specific purpose, like just to write these small scripts and things like that. And now it's just, you know, this, they made WordPress and it's basically taken over the internet. I don't understand. So here's the thing. So if a lack of access, as you say, to PHP is a limitation for Webflow, is that because parts of any website inevitably use PHP, but you can't interact with it? I feel, okay, so I think maybe I should clarify. It's not necessarily the lack of access to PHP, but it's a lack of access to the functionality that PHP provides. So if there could be an alternative, that would be fine. It's not PHP itself that I'm like, Webflow needs PHP, but the, some of the functionalities that PHP provides, that's the kind of stuff that would be really nice to have. Yeah. So PHP basically allows you to say, I need to be able to do this. I need to be able to go into this part of the database, grab this information, organize it this way and send it back. Right. And, and you can't, do that and you're basically sort of limited to go get you know this chunk of text and stick it in this text box and go get this rich text and stick it in the paragraph box right it's like you know that just doesn't give you a lot of things to work with you can do a little bit of that with javascript where you can kind of you know sort of and and i'm i don't know javascript really i just know that that's a little bit of what's being done with it in 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 the no code like in webflow is just sort of trying to access some of those parts that you can't normally get at directly but you're not working with php right you're yep. you're kind of sending instructions but mm -hmm. to say get this and change it like this um, so right now if you were using the webflow and you want to access to a uh, you know backend or database, what you gotta do is to use the view or a Node.js or something like the refocus folks are doing. Or uh, I don't know. I mean, it depends on that. what your structure is. Mm -hmm. If if you can get away with just using the CMS collection as your quote unquote database, mm -hmm. then that that's fine. But if you need like some complex SQL operations and stuff, then you should probably not even use Webflow to be honest, yeah. because the whole point is no code. Let's yep. try to stick to that no. as much as possible. <laughs> okay. uh, like, I don't see the value in like adding this, um, you know, access to a programming language in Webflow. It doesn't make sense. I mean, at that point, you're just going back to WordPress and then 
you know you'll give people these two parts you know you can do you can do your wizzy wig you know gooey stuff or you can do the score and it's just wordpress all over again except well, that except, it's hosted on web yeah. Pro servers yeah and it isn't wordpress <laughs> yeah and then you, you, know? you don't call it wordpress yeah <laughs> yeah but it, it yeah I think what one thing they could do Webflow is maybe make it easier to integrate APIs in some way. I don't know how they do that, uh, but I think that would solve a lot of problems because um, the APIs, it's APIs in general deal with the database anyway. So that's kind of the architecture. So if they just do that, like make some sort of way to add like get requests and post requests and all that, that might do something, but accessing the code i don't think is a good idea yeah so, i feel like yeah. with the fin suite extension part of what's so you know why it's why everyone loves it so much why it's so crazy is because they were able to kind of crack that webflow api that people just aren't getting or you know the functionality isn't there you know there's a lot of people out there that are complaining about webflow and apis you know but it seems like fin suite they were able to crack that part of it and build that extension to do a lot of stuff that people were wanting, but nobody mm -hmm. could figure out the API, you know, to, yeah. to have the third party stuff to do it. So I think that's, you mm -hmm. know, hopefully maybe, you know, since they've got a better understanding of it, maybe that'll grow into a lot of other people having better understandings of it too. Right. Right. Or, or perhaps even Webflow incorporating some of those, you know, some of those things that are, you know, really helpful yep. right into the system perhaps um i was going to say that tomorrow on is it tomorrow or thursday i can't remember now it might be thursday um ben parker who works at webflow uh, is one of the hosts of the visual dev fm uh, podcast is going to be on one of the Airtable presentations talking about working with apis um and uh, you know i would expect that there's probably going to be some discussion of Webflow in that around the APIs, um, just given that that's a lot of what he does. Can you yeah. can you share that actually? It'd be kind of yeah, um, I have to just let me just check exactly when it is. Whether it's tomorrow, I think it might be tomorrow. It's just that Aaron has a thing, his own thing on Wednesday, and then he now has a thing on Thursday that's an Airtable. Um, presentations so i just could never remember now which is which i think as far as what to expect from webflow from like features from a features point of view just look at their wish list i think mm -hmm. that's the only thing that they're yeah. going I, by i think that the webflow like the the webflow user base is really passionate and also really demanding so they must just be looking at these wish lists like there's only so many hours yeah. a day We're membership trying. membership yeah, membership was at the top of that, I guess, and that now they're finally coming out with something. And then probably next is probably something to do with e-com, I'm guessing. But um, yeah, I think because they don't really have an official roadmap and a lot of like software companies, they typically publish like some sort of roadmap, but Webflow is like probably just like, hey, this looks popular. Or, hey, look, this looks easy. And the developers like, okay, we'll probably build that. I don't know. Or well, they probably I have like an internal plan more likely yeah i yeah because they don't really they don't really just say an awful lot about what they're actually working on and there are an awful lot of people that are really frustrated with the wish lists because stuff's been sitting there for three years and you know nothing ever seems to happen with it or it'll be like oh yeah yeah we're working on that and then you never hear any more about it so it's uh um but to be fair to them like as a developer seeing that platform i mean it's super stable mm -hmm. It's oh, unbelievably yeah. stable. Yep. It is like that. That is like I. I'm a developer. Like respect to their developers. I mean, because like dealing with bugs and stuff as a developer is just a pain. But whatever they've got going, I mean, like I've never seen like a crash of any sort. Mm -hmm. Maybe a little slow here and there, but I mean that's uh, it's it's unbelievable. Yeah, I totally agree. Um, I'm not having a lot of luck finding this. It's cool. I can always stalk you on LinkedIn, as is my general way. <laughs> well, I yeah, I was just checking Aaron's Twitter feed and I wasn't seeing it. So, 
Mm-hmm. No, that's cool. I um, just as an FYI, I, I do seem to get a lot of conversation and interest on LinkedIn compared to other platforms for whatever reason. It could be completely by chance. Um, but if anyone here, Rishad Jim, is not connected on LinkedIn, that's probably the easiest way to. I don't know. Things. Send me send me a profile link somewhere in the chat or something. I don't know if we're connected. I will. I will. Because it yeah, it was it was completely by chance because I began just by by publishing them using Bevy and using Meetup and then I started using LinkedIn and it ended up actually feeling like the most successful platform for for sharing these things. So it's actually LinkedIn? how to yeah, yeah. So it's t- it tends to be how I get in touch with like different members and message people and like connect people so it's um i mean meetup is ugly and it's just for like local engagement i guess like super well, yeah, local people, people, it's very local but it's also um in terms of people who say that they're attending versus who actually attend it's the least reliable platform when looking at people like coming to these meetings and then like trying to actually get them here like i don't trust the people you say they're attending on Meetup at all. It's really weird. <laughs> right. Yeah, I've been to some meetups and it's like, it's just like that. Like there'll be like 10 people attending and two people show up. Yeah, yeah. It's it's weird. It's like, it's almost like, um, I don't know, like people just sort of attend because they think it sounds interesting in their spare time and they attend five other things and they have no intention of going to it. So I put it up there just because there's a couple of regulars who kind of consult it for the link specifically. But in terms of where I personally, like as a chapter leader and as the person who hosts these things, like where I reach out to people and talk to them, like LinkedIn is definitely where I go. So I put it in the in the chat, just just in case. So we yeah, go. I sent you a connection request, I guess. Cool. Jim, you too, because then I can I can send you your information over to Dustin, like he oh, asked. Great. Thank you. Yeah, I yeah, guess yeah. I need to get started with LinkedIn. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <I> mean, <laughs> that's cool. That? We'll, just, we'll just screenshot you here, and that can be the profile picture. <laughs> awesome. Okay. Cool. Well, it's quarter past nine, and we've overrun. Been amazing chatting to everyone. Yeah. Should we call it a night? Likewise. Get serenaded by Penny in a future meeting. Sounds good to me. Great. Yeah, I maybe you know enjoy this meeting as well. So yeah, thank you. Looking Thanks forward for to seeing you all again next week. Oh, next month. I think uh, I'm gonna try and make it a little bit closer this time around. <laughs> just FYI, Penny. Just because uh, um, it was there were a few delays with this one. I think it was maybe five or six weeks out from the last, and this time I want to try and like rein it in a tiny bit. So I think maybe three to four weeks maximum. Okay. All right. Well, get in touch with me and and let's set up a. A chat maybe and I will. Okay, cool. Bye everyone. All right. Bye. Bye y'all.